Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, Canadian Snowman, back again with Geography Now. And we're on to the seas, Cambodia. I uh, believe my sister vis actually has visited Cambodia, and I believe it's uh, Asia, like near like Vietnam and like Korea, that kind of area there, I believe. <laughs> I hope I'm right. Uh, but other than that, I really don't know much at all about it um uh, is there like is there like jungles and stuff over there <laughs> i don't know um but uh yeah let's just go ahead and jump into it because yeah i i don't know because i don't know anything about it so i'm not sure what to say so let's just jump into it and so i can actually learn but anyways please hit that like and subscribe button guys please and thank you and let's just jump into it Hey Geography Peeps, so this episode is going to have some bad audio because I'm currently in my parents' basement filming this, not at the YouTube space, and uh, the microphone we typically use doesn't fit into the audio jack in my camera, so um, just bear with me, and we're going to basically go back to the quality of Afghanistan. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie, this is our first country with the letter C, Cambodia, and basically Cambodia had a relatively normal life until four really messed up years kind of ruined everything for them. But before we talk about that, let's dissect the flag. Four years. The flag is pretty simple and conveniently symbolic. There are three bands, two blue on the top and bottom, and red in the middle. In the center, you have a picture of the Temple of Angkor Wat, the symbolic country-defining icon of Cambodia. Blue is a traditional color of royalty, and red represents the Cambodian people. The white cool, of Angkor Wat symbolizes the spirituality of Cambodia, as it is a heavily Buddhist nation. Keep in mind, this was actually the original flag from 1948, before a lot of crazy stuff happened. A bunch of other flags ensued until they finally came back to this one. All right, now let's okay. talk about all that craziness, shall we? Why? Eh, no clever anecdote, let's just jump into it this time. Cambodia is located in Southeast Asia, bordered by Thailand to the west, Laos to the north, and Vietnam to the east, and the Bay of Thailand to the south. The country is divided into 25 provinces, and the capital is Phnom Penh. That's right, people, it's pronounced Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Or Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, formerly named Chakto Muk, is actually very conveniently located in the country because it's where the Mekong, the Lower Mekong, the Basak, and Sak rivers all converge into one point. This is also where the royal family lives and is a bustling city overtaken by mopeds, bicycles, and roads with no wow. stop signs making traffic a free-for-all. Should I signal? <laughs> Should I signal? Looks crazy. Yeah. Good luck, everybody else! Off the coasts, without including the small islets and rocks, Cambodia has over 80 main islands that they have Ooh. sovereignty over, most of which are close to the coast, easily accessible. Some you can even see from beaches, like Snake Island, visible from the interestingly named Hawaii Beach. The furthest of these islands and the southernmost point of Cambodia is the Kopo Luai Islands, which were originally just used for military bases, but are now open to the public for tourists. Now, for the longest time, Cambodia was actually split kind of east and west by the Mekong River, and the only way to get across was either by ferry or to fly. In 2001, they opened their first bridge across the Mekong River, oh. the Kizuna Bridge, funded by the Japanese government, and finally, it joined the two parts of Cambodia by road for the first time. Since then, three more have been built, and more are projected to come in the future. Oh, wow. Now, of course, when going to Cambodia, the landmark that pops up into everybody's mind immediately is Angkor. I just that that's just awesome that, you know, you guys are definitely growing and, you know, that's awesome. I really like that. And Snake Island, I think I've seen, what video has that? I know I've seen a video of something about Snake Island. It was like the most condensed area of snakes and different kinds of snakes. I don't know. I don't want to go there. Anyways and more are projected to come in the future. Now, of course, when going to Cambodia, the landmark that pops up into everybody's mind immediately is Angkor Wat, the ancient ruins of the Khmer Empire. The town nearby, Siem Reap, actually has an international airport, so you can just fly over there rather than go to Phnom Penh and then take a bus, which, by the way, is not really advised because things get a little shady in the rural areas. We'll explain more about that in the demographics. Just keep walking, bub. You didn't see nothing here. Now, if you look at Angkor Wat, you'll not only notice the stunningly enticing Whoa. view of botanically dominated temples and pagodas that that have trees growing out of them, but you'll also notice that ah. it has these perfectly straight geometric wow. moats and reservoirs adjacent to the ruins. These were cleverly constructed by the Empire to aid irrigation and in return feed an entire city that is speculated to have the largest pre-industrial metropolis in Asia during that time. Otherwise, Amazing. most areas in Cambodia have villages that function in a subtropical developing way heavily based on the environment. Now let's discuss that environment. Awesome, man. 
Now, this is where things get really colorful, because Cambodia is kind of like a landscape marvel. The country is generally characterized as having a low-lying central plain with hilly and light mountainous regions in the southwest, and especially in the border by Vietnam. In this country, rivers are everywhere, and in the top middle corner, you can find Ton Le Sap, which is the largest freshwater lake in all of Southeast Asia. Ton Le Sap expands dramatically in the wet season and is home to an enormous cluster of biodiversity, including over 200 species of freshwater fish, like the giant barb fish, the national fish of Cambodia, that can reach lengths up to three meters long. Wow. In your face, Japan, with your yellowfish tuna? This is how we roll in Cambodia. Now, of course, one of the best things about Cambodia would have to be the food. The World Rice Conference actually voted Cambodia as having the best rice in the world three years in a row. And here's possibly wow. one of the reasons why. Like many other third world countries, the good thing is that the food is mostly fresh and organic, partially because most people can't afford pesticides. Therefore, almost every time you get a wholesome, pure batch of produce. Now, although fish is the main source of protein that's consumed, the majority of Cambodians are entomophagous, or people who consume insects in their diet. Insects are actually very nutritious, low in fat and carbs, and high in protein, and can be sold at the same weight for the fraction of the price that the mainstream meats would cost for, like beef and chicken. Now, despite the fresh food, Cambodia's economy is actually more heavily dependent on textiles and footwear. Just look at the tag on your shirt. It might just be from Cambodia. Not on our watch. As well as tourism. Hey, Janice, I found that in for what? 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 Cambodia still <laughs> maintains and facilitates elephant sanctuaries for the majestic Asian elephant, almost revered in some parts as keepers take great care of them as a source of their livelihood, especially when tourists come and kind of want to ride them. Hey, Janice, I'm riding an elephant. What? Now, here's a sad thing. Because of its brutal past that we'll discuss in the next section, UNESCO has actually listed Cambodia as the third most landmine country in the world with about four million landmines that still need to be cleared out for the area. Now, because of this, Cambodia actually has the highest per capita percentage of amputees in the world. Each month, there are about 300 to 700 new amputations due to landmine injuries. The country is slowly trying to fix this problem, but for the time being, the plausible threat still lingers, especially in rural secluded areas. Now, let's explain more about how this came to be in... Damn, it sucks. Okay, first off, let's distinguish a few confusing nuances that people seem to have with Cambodia's demographical titles. Now, it's perfectly acceptable to refer to somebody in Cambodia as a Cambodian, and although the term Cambodian is kind of a universally interchangeable term to refer to the Cambodian ethnicity, the technically correct term to refer to the Cambodian ethnicity would be Khmer. Yeah, that's right. All this time you thought it was Khmer, right? No, it's Khmer. The R is silent and the E is an I. The Cambodian language is also called Khmer, and as well as the script and the culture. Speaking of which, people who speak Khmer can understand a little bit of Thai and Lao as the languages have piggybacked off of each other for centuries. Huh. Most Khmer people can understand about a quarter to a third of the Thai and Lao languages if they listen really hard. The problem is, unlike Khmer, Thai and Lao are actually tonal languages, whereas Khmer isn't. So it can be a little confusing, but overall it's like a code game when they talk to each other. Vietnamese, though, is completely unintelligible to them. That's that funny. Being Said. Cambodia has about 15 and a half million people. The vast majority, around 90%, are ethnically Khmer, about 5% are Vietnamese, 1% Chinese, and the remainder come from various people groups. About 95% of the country is Buddhist, adhering to the Theravada branch of Buddhism, and Islam and Christianity make up about 2% each, with the remaining 1% being other affiliations. Now, in order to understand Cambodia, you kind of have to understand where it came from and how it got to where it is today. You know how I do things. I'm going to summarize this in the quickest way I can. Kingdom, protectorate, occupied, kingdom, Republic, really bad dictatorship, Vietnamese puppet, transitional state, and finally monarchy all over again. The really bad dictatorship was the Communist Party, the Khmer Rouge. They took over in the 70s and killed around one-fifth of Cambodia's population, approximately what? 1.5 to 3 million people. The victims were mostly educated people that were deemed a threat to the regime, as well as priests and monks, as the Marxist-influenced ideologies of Pol Pot instituted and forced a secular state that opposed and outlawed all types of religion. Books were burned, temples and churches were ransacked. So essentially, that that explains why today about half of the population is about 15 and under. The genocide of the 70s effectively cut off an entire generation and those left would eventually have an explosion of children outnumbering themselves within a few decades. Speaking of which, Cambodia is the only country in Asia that has a king of part French descent and he's also the only monarch in Asia that speaks Czech fluently. Culture wise, Cambodia really <laughs> sticks out. A lot of the customs are heavily influenced by Theravada Buddhism and traditional Khmer rituals. As a classified third world country, Cambodians live off of an average salary 
of $2.60 a day. One thing you have to understand is that, like many other countries in Southeast Asia, Cambodians are masters of vocational improvisation. Since the economy is highly unregulated, working in Cambodia is kind of like a free-for-all. When it comes to money, you can pretty much be and do anything you want. This can be a good and a bad thing because it allows Cambodians to innovate on all sorts of hustling. For example, you can start your own street corner gas station. All you need is a steel drum and an air compressor. Heck, you can even sell gas in used pop bottles. And for the record, Jagger peeps, yes, I grew up in the Midwest. I call it pop. I refuse yep. to call it soda. Don't even get so lit up. No, I refuse to call it that. <laughs> However, the downside is that it also opens up the door for a lot of controversial underground corrupt industries. Cambodia has some of the highest rates of human trafficking in the world, including the trafficking of children. It's sad, but it has to be addressed because it's true and it can't be glossed over. For a third world country where poverty is quite rampant, Cambodians may have to hustle, but they are surprisingly thrifty as well. After the monarchy was reestablished, the government encouraged people to move back to abandoned towns by offering them free homes. These are typically used to operate small businesses like grocery stores, restaurants, and moped repair shops, and so on. Cambodia has dealt with a lot in the past half century and is trying to grow, and sometimes to grow, you need a little help from... That'd be cool, all those little shops. Have it's you cool. Had a friend that you realize would soon become a really terrible roommate? Yeah, that's kind of the situation that Cambodia got itself in. Although relations are generally okay today, Cambodia does essentially have a little bit of historical beef with its neighbors Thailand and Vietnam. Historically, Thailand used to be the arch enemy of Cambodia and went through a number of conquests to rule over the entire area. To this day, they still have few disputes over the Preah Bihar province. I hope I pronounced that right. Probably not. And about 10 years ago, riots broke out and flags and embassies were burned down as a Thai actress claimed that Angkor Wat belonged to Thailand. Wow. Vietnam was kind of like the ulterior motive friend who kept saying, hey, I'll protect you, and in return, I'll just kind of control over you. Cool? France still has relatively good ties with Cambodia and not only has bilateral agreements and embassies, but also helps out with internal development. Many schools and universities are funded by the French and are instructed in French as well. However, due to the tourism sector, Cambodians are favoring English more as a second language rather than French, but they still teach it there. In terms of their best friends, however, Cambodia would actually probably say China, Japan, and South Korea. All three of these countries invest the heaviest in the country's infrastructure, and they have helped build roads, huh. buildings, malls, and business centers all all over. Large flocks of Koreans and Japanese regularly visit Cambodia for vacation and are welcomed with open arms. In conclusion, Cambodia is a very vibrant, colorful nation that had a really bad punch to the gut in the 70s, but they didn't throw in the towel just yet, and they're just starting to get their breath back, stand up, and get ready for another round. Here you go. Stay tuned. Cameroon is coming up next. Cameroon. That's awesome. Like, they definitely, yeah, because that's some bad history right there. And it sucks that the mines are still everywhere. And there's really not much you can do about that. I mean, you try and get rid of them, you know, with, I guess, the metal detectors and stuff, but it's a lot of area to cover. So, man, uh, yeah, but they're getting bridges. They're getting, like, making business, new businesses. Everything's kind of popping up there. It's kind of interesting. Like, everyone's kind of, like, trying to hustle you, you know, all these little little shops and stuff, and people trying to hustle and do what they can, you know? And so uh, it's very interesting. So, like, the history and everything, I just think it's just very interesting. This, this actually flew by really quick because... I don't know, just all look at it, a beautiful scenery and just everything. It was definitely a cool video and uh, definitely learned a lot in <laughs> Cambodia. So if you're from Cambodia, just leave a comment in the comment section below. And uh, just, just so, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to, to see if anyone who's from these countries actually watch <laughs> my videos. So anyways, guys, I uh, thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button, please, and thank you. And... I'll definitely catch you guys in future videos. Thanks for watching.